What's up, people? Welcome or welcome back to Invest with T-Claws. My name is Tevi, and this is a channel dedicated to my investment journey, along with coverage on Tesla, Neo, Virgin Galactic, and ChargePoint. Come for the information, stay for the random clips. All right, so today we're going to be talking about Tesla and specifically how the market is reacting to the impressive numbers that Tesla posted over the weekend for their Q1 deliveries. And we'll hear from analyst Dan Ives at Wedbush and Gene Monster from Loop Venture. And then we'll wrap things up with the weekly performance review expressed in percentages for the gain or loss on the portfolio. All right, with that said, let's get into the video. Let's quick pull up Dan Ives' profile on tip ranks, and you can see here that he's a five-star analyst and is ranked number 85 out of 7,425 analysts and has pretty strong credentials with a high success rate. So let's see what Dan has to say about these numbers that Tesla posted and their future. Tesla overnight to a buy from neutral while upping the price target to 1,000 from 950. Dan, good morning. Thanks, great to be here. All right, what'd you think of the delivery numbers? They certainly topped your expectations. I thought it was a paradigm changer. I mean, if there was a quarter given ship shortage supply issues, that they were gonna run into any sort of blockade, it was gonna be one Q. I mean, these numbers were massively ahead of whisper, especially on Model 3 and Model Y. I think right now we're looking close to not just 850, potentially 900K for the year. You trajectory this out, I think it's a green tidal wave. It's an inflection in terms of what we're seeing in the stock and the sector. And that's why we, you know, not just put to a thousand dollar price target upgrade, but it's one of our top ideas now for Wedbush. I think there's a stock that could be at 50, 60 percent the next year. He said a paradigm shift. And why am I emphasizing this? Well, it's because it's a big deal when it comes to market sentiment, especially coming from Dan Ives. And to put things into context, if you look at his track record here, you can see that since April of 2019, that was the last time that he assigned a buy rating for the Tesla stock. Since then, it's been nothing but a series of hold ratings. And it was this performance over the weekend for these numbers that Tesla posted that finally got him to upgrade his rating to a buy. And not just that, he increased the price target to $1,000 within the bull case, 1300 which actually puts us pretty close to my $1,400 price target that I have for the Tesla stock by the end of this year. The semiconductor shortage we've been talking about so much so closely. Um, when you look at the production numbers for the quarter, were, was there impact there or was that really just more the shift to the next generation of S and X vehicles? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it was about a seven to ten percent headwind in terms of the quarter, especially we saw that on S and X. And you trajectory that out. I think without the chip shortage, we're looking at a number with the two in front of it, two hundred K. It's a green tidal wave right now, and I think what we're continuing to see, even though it's been a brutal, painful sell for EV and for Tesla, I think that's in the rearview mirror here. I, this is not just a paradigm change in terms of the quarter. Looking forward, I think this right now is a company that's really hitting its next stride of growth, and especially when we look out with Model Y, Cybertruck, and China, that's the linchpin. We think China is worth potentially up to $150 per share. So some really good points made here by Dan, and it's important to note that Giga Shanghai is not actually fully ramped just yet. It was just over the weekend that we found out that the next leg of the expansion was approved. And so that means that there's a lot more capacity coming later this year. And I've said this before in previous videos, but it's worth repeating again. When Giga Berlin and Giga Texas come online this year, later this year, and we start pumping out some Cybertrucks and semis in Q3, Q4 later this year, it's truly going to be game over. And because I'm not a financial advisor, I'm going to let him say this. Percent, thousand dollars our price target for Tesla, bull case 1300. And I think this is a really golden buying opportunity. So yeah, there you have it. Dan, you mentioned uh, the Biden administration. You know, how much is an, uh, a new EV tax credit worth to Tesla? Are we talking, you know, over the next five years here, you know, it could be the type of profit driver that takes Tesla shares to, what, 2,000 a share, who knows? Yeah, Brian, I think that's the key, because if you look at today, if me or you or anyone else goes in to buy a Tesla, 7,500 tax credit, you're not getting for a Tesla or a GM. They've already gone through that 200K ceiling. I believe as part of the infrastructure bill, the $2.3 trillion, you see those restored. So the tax credits come back to the Tesla and GM, and we're hearing out of our contacts in the Bellway, that 7,500 could potentially be 10,000 in terms of a credit. 
And that's going to be a massive catalyst, not just for Tesla, but for the EV ecosystem in the U.S. as part of this green tidal wave. I think we're just starting to see this all play out domestically. So I want you to think about how significant this actually is for Tesla to have the $10,000 EV tax credit reinstated. If you consider that the standard range plus model three is currently the most affordable Tesla at a starting price of $37,000 and some change, removing $10,000 off of that price lowers it down to $27,000 for what is already the world most popular and best selling EV. And at 27K, that puts it squarely in com direct competition with the Toyota Camry. But I want you to take that a step further. If you consider that in two years time, according to what Elon announced during Battery Day, they were planning or they are planning to have a Tesla Model 2 is what we'll call it for a starting price of $25,000. If you've now apply the same EV tax credit of $10,000 to that model, that brings it down to $15,000. So at that point, why would anyone buy an ICE car? You're going to essentially have a car that has at least 300 miles worth of range, if not more, better performance, lower maintenance cost, and more than likely at that point in time, fully autonomous capabilities. There is nothing else on the market that's going to be able to compete with that. And while you might argue that there's, there's other uh, EV automakers come into market and they're going to have affordable cars, they're still not going to be able to match that same price target. And I'm willing to bet that there's going to be a lot more people that buy the Tesla because it's a better value for the money than everything else. So there's a lot more growth ahead for Tesla. When is Tesla going to see some more real competition in this market? I mean, it's coming. We all know it's coming. At some point, it's going to be maybe more problematic for Tesla, maybe not. But when are you kind of expecting that and, and what is that going to look like? Yeah, and will you look at the, on the X-Ping, similar what we saw with NIO, uh, as, as well as some other Chinese players, strong numbers coming out of the board in China. But right now, it's a $5 trillion market over the next decade. Big enough ocean for more than one boat. There's going to be many winners here. I mean, we have 130 to 140 players going after the EV market. And I, of course, they're going to they're gonna have some erosion of market share at Tesla. But this is a rising tide lifts all boats in terms of EVs. That's what you're seeing in China. And I think that's what you're going to see in the U.S. I think GM, Fisker, you know, Faraday, and others as they really dive into the deep end of the EV pool. I love the competition is coming comment. And yes, the competition is coming. There's no doubt about it. The market is going to grow. But you have to keep in mind that Tesla is not going to be standing still while everybody else is trying to catch up, Tesla is only accelerating at this point. They're hitting the slope of the S-curve and they are growing exponentially. And Elon has already guided to the fact that over the next eight to 10 years, they expect, Tesla expects to grow by 50% year over year. Meaning that by the time we get to 2030, that's going to be a rate of 20 million cars delivered per year. So even though the market share might um, drop, to a smaller percentage and, you know, call it 50% of the market Tesla owns versus the current 80% that they're where they're currently sitting at. Yes, it is a smaller percentage, but 20 million cars revenue compared to currently half a million cars revenue a year, there's a significant difference. So even though the market share and percentage is lowering, the associated revenue that comes with that is going to be significantly larger. So whether the competition gets here or not has truly no impact on Tesla. They already have a massive lead. No one's realistically going to catch up to them for the foreseeable future. And they're only going to expand their footprint globally. When you do look at other emerging competitors like GM, are they going to cut into market share? Is that this is ultimately the biggest uh, uh, risk to Tesla is that the traditional cast of characters, traditional OEMs get their act together. Uh, we talked about the electric Hummer. I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical that that's going to get any sort of mainstream traction, but that is the risk. And you will see Tesla's market share decline. It's 80% in the U.S. It's a much, much lower. It's their losing share in Europe. I think that that will reverse when they get new factory there. But that is the, the question. I would just point to this piece around competition as, as investors contemplate the impact of competition. Tesla started out as a high-end brand, a wealthy person's brand, and they have 
they are successively navigating that brand globally to an everyday person's EV brand. And the reason is that the value of the car is exceeds the competition. If they can maintain that edge, I think that competition will, yes, they'll lose share, but they'll continue to have a, a measurable piece of a massive addressable market. All right. So very quickly, Gene, stock's trading around 708 this morning. Where does it go from here? I think the next three to f five years, I think that this could be, you know, a, a much bigger company, 4x the size of what it is. It's impossible to predict mm -hmm. Tesla in the near term. Long term, I think this goes higher. This will likely not come as a shocker to any of you watching, but I'm 100% aligned with what Gene said. And so maybe the last thing that I will mention and before we move on to the weekly performance review is this. Did you catch at the end that he had a 4x multiple on the Tesla stock price from current levels over the next three to five years? So if you do the math, that put the stock price target in three to five years at $2,800 a share. And why does that sound familiar? Well, it's because the folks at ARK Invest and Kathy Woods have their base case in 2025 at $3,000. And that was just a few weeks back that that number was released. And here we are now, a few weeks past, and now with the new numbers that Tesla is putting down, more and more people are now starting to see that potential of the $3,000 um, price target in the next three to five years. So I'm 100% on board, as I said, if you saw last week's video, I'm also targeting the $3,000 range to reach my goal of $1 million by the end of 2025 for the portfolio. <laughs> Dancing Elon, that's just a classic. You best believe I'm going to pull those same exact moves once we reach a million dollar mark. Mark my word. All right, let's get back to the video. With that said, we'll jump into the weekly performance review by percentage gain or loss for the portfolio. So we came into the week on a positive note at 2.59% pre-market before dropping during the regular trading hours. That was as low as 2.76%. Tuesday saw a slight bump to 0.92% before uh, dropping drastically down to the lowest point in the week for the portfolio at negative 8.24%. And that was post the address from Jay Powell. Uh, and after that, we saw a nice rise back up, which is typical post address once the market has a chance to digest and ended the week uh, with the unfavorable news from the jobless claims and saw uh, the portfolio drop again into the latest hours on Friday. Ultimately, we ended up the week at negative 0.529%, which isn't too bad, all things considered. All right, people, this will do it for today's video. If you enjoyed the content and found it insightful, please drop the video a like and share with your friends. Also, for my newcomers, remember to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any future content. As a reminder, I post every Sunday and occasionally during the week. And again, thank you all for watching. Stay humble, hustle hard, and I'll see you in the next one.